Vinti decide I'm not able to hear anything if it is audible the meeting is going on I'm yes, sorry Vinti, to interrupt oh uh, hi Richita I'm really sorry I'm not sure that if meeting is I'm in any conversation is going on or not because I can only Vinita, the meeting is just going to start so we are on time sure thank you sure sure thank you uh, welcome to the webinar ladies with uh, Ruchita Daneja. She is the Vice President Business of uh, Paytm Payments Bank. And it will be great to hear from her. Thank you Ruchita for joining us. Uh, you can go ahead Ruchita and I will share my screen with the presentation. Thank you so much uh, Smita and the Jobs for Her team. Uh, it's my pleasure to be talking to all the people who've joined this webinar. I'm presuming it to be more ladies. Um, okay, so let's let's start with uh, slide two. Uh, you know, this is just, uh, I, I believe all of us have stories, you know, and, and all of us have very interesting stories and journeys that all of us have been through and uh, you know successes and not such pleasant times and you know it's all of us have gone through uh, you know ups and downs in our lives and careers and you know in our aspirations etc. Uh, my story so far is like this that uh, I've been born and brought up in Delhi. I did my schooling uh, and graduation in Delhi then I went to Mumbai to do my masters uh, in business administration and straight from there I joined Citibank uh, as a management associate. And uh, my journey with Citibank was uh, very, very interesting. I got the opportunity to, uh, you know, work across some five, six different roles, uh, initially based in India. And then, uh, you know, I was in Singapore uh, for a little under one year. And then uh, last year, April, uh, you know, is when I joined Paytm. So in fact, I've kind of just completed the first uh, year anniversary at Paytm. So it's, it's a good milestone. So it's quite nice. Uh, you know, to be kind of, in a way, commemorating this uh, with this presentation. And uh, so that's, that's been my career journey. I've uh, I, I largely been a salesperson till, uh, you know, when I joined Paytm. So I handled a couple of rules here, including, uh, you know, when I initially joined, I was heading banking operations for the payments bank. And I also do a sales role here now. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about uh, my story is uh, that I think some of the things that happened along, you know, along the way in my career journey were uh, something that I don't think I necessarily planned. And, uh, but, you know, the opportunities uh, came my way and I was uh, quick to, I guess, grab them. And uh, that's what really got me to where I am today or to all the places that I have been before. And the story goes like this. So when I was doing my summer internship with uh, Citibank, I got my uh, pre-placement offer from uh, the division that I was doing my internship with, which was uh, Treasury in FX sales. And because of a personal reason, I wanted to be in Delhi, and I put up that request to City and City being the you know really nice organization that it has always been. They said, of course, we can uh, you know accommodate your request to be in Delhi, uh, but you know we cannot give you Treasury. We'll have to give you um, a sales role, a BD role, and you know, this was my first job. I didn't know the difference between, frankly, a BD role versus any other that they would have offered me. And I said, yeah, sure, okay. Um, you know, and I, and I went ahead with that choice. And I think that's how uh, sales discovered me. I always say this, that, you know, sales discovered me rather than me discovering sales. And, uh, you know, and, and one of the themes that I will touch upon a little later as well during my presentation is this, you know, whole think about grabbing the opportunities or actually seeking some of these opportunities which might be so different to what you think you inherently are. I think that's very, very important. So for me, by the way, up until then, I always thought that I was someone that, uh, you know, was, uh, I, I was better equipped at, you know, sitting behind a computer and doing some modeling and running some, you know, algorithms and doing some, you know, derivative pricing, etc. I never inherently thought of myself as a salesperson because I was always someone who was uh, inherently very shy. And, you know, I was more comfortable in, you know, 
one to one kind of conversations than necessarily going out and networking and talking to strangers but uh, here i was where you know it was i was given the choice of uh, the location that i was requesting for but a role that i never thought i was uh, capable enough of handling but then i said let's go with the flow i don't know any different this is my first job so let's let's give it a try uh, you know it's if i give it my best maybe it will work out maybe you know if it doesn't then you know we'll figure out i don't think that at that point of time i guess it's the youth that you know uh, help me uh, because i don't think uh, i thought about what if it doesn't work and i think that's that's a very important thing as well to just you know think about things and take things uh, especially when you're trying to take an uncharted territory or you know go on an uncharted path uh, just think positive don't think negative i think that's something that really helps me so i don't think i i thought about you know what if it doesn't work what will i do so i just went ahead with that and uh, you know to my surprise uh, and i guess to the credit of uh, a lot of really nice seniors around me who helped me really learn the ropes of a sales role i think i uh, you know discovered that uh, it was actually quite enjoyable to be in a sales role and i will talk about that you know just a while in the next slide and i kind of discovered that i did have have an act for it uh, while i might not have had the opportunity to try it out before in my life but you know here i was and i had these really nice people around me who kind of mentored me and you know gave me this whole informal support and showed me how it was done and you know after that it was there was no looking back and then i you know of course i spent the last 15 years doing uh, sales and and b2b sales and institutional sales at that largely while right now i'm selling a b2c product but selling it to large institutional clients so so that's that's really my journey on the career side on the personal side uh, i've been now married for uh, 14 years uh, and you know my husband and i have two beautiful children and a 11-year-old son and a 4-year-old daughter so uh, you know as uh, kajal very uh, kindly put it in the blog you know i've kind of not taken a career break i have of course been away on maternity leave in city uh, had you know self selected a 6 month maternity leave uh, way back uh, you know even before the government of india came out with this revised policy that's you know that's been introduced this year so i did take these two breaks but uh, you know it it always was very uh, nice to know that the organization uh, you know was making sure that i'm rewarded for all the effort and work that i had been doing up until my you know my up until, uh, up until my maternity break and uh, they were very happy to show me an equally challenging role if there was a change in role and uh, you know they were more than supportive to give me my next challenge when i came back the first time around the second time around i came back into my same role but then in a matter of i think couple of months they upgraded my role and gave me another region to look at so clearly it was i think a two sided street where the organization was very happy to uh, you know wait for me to come back and give me more challenging assignments when i came back and i think from my side as well it was important for me to step back into the full steam of things uh, when i returned back from maternity and uh, so that's that's really been my journey so far moving on to the next slide uh, you know i want to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, you know my experiences as a sales person and you know if there are any aspiring sales uh, people on this call i hope uh, this this can give you a little bit more insight into what a sales role involves and what it takes to succeed here i am of course available to answer any questions otherwise uh, you know outside of this webinar as well later and uh, so sales you know and uh, i wanted to put this slide out there because uh, i do know there are a lot of perceptions and not always uh, positive perceptions about the sales role and uh, particularly when it comes to you know when people think about women doing sales and uh, i just while well, you know there wasn't place to put all those myths ar around uh, women in sales on this one slide but i thought this one uh, comic strip on the left kind of sums it up you know where this guy is saying that everything on your resume was a lie i like that and welcome to sales so you know one of the things that people think that sales people do is uh, continuously uh, lie to be able to succeed and i think that couldn't be far from the truth and the statement that zig ziglar has made who's of course a uh, you know very known name uh, as far as his uh, inputs and wisdom on sales is concerned and you know what he says that if people like you uh, you know you're someone who's you know very approachable likable someone very interesting has interesting stories to share people will of course listen to you but you know they will uh, do business with you uh, only if they trust you so fundamentally you know to succeed in sales it is very very important to ensure that you build your trust factor and uh, i might be biased on this 
uh, and and excuse that please but i genuinely believe that you know women i think find it much easier to build a trustworthy image of themselves because you know typically uh, and and again i'm generalizing this but you know if you look at look around that most women are uh, you know are are always very um, particular and sure of what they are committing to and they normally commit to things only what they think they are very confident of delivering so so that's that's an ingredient uh, that is required to build a trust with a client you know and this could be a institutional client or could be a retail client and all of us are customers uh, you know outside of whatever jobs you might be doing and and i'm sure you resonate with this that whoever you know comes across as someone who's trustworthy is responsive uh, is willing to give you a patient you, you know uh, hearing is uh, willing to empathize is willing to put themselves in your shoes and understand what you're going through and what are you asking for uh, sometimes it also requires you know the sales person to not just you know address what the client is asking for but you know go deeper and really understand that you know what is the context of this ask and actually then come back and possibly say no to the immediate opportunity that might be there and actually you know come back with a recommendation that might be beneficial for the client uh, or their organization even if it means compromising on your own sales targets and your own sales achievements so it really is about being really really authentic to your client and uh, you know and i think the other thing that it takes to succeed in sales is this whole uh, uh, ambitiousness to be the best at what you are and again uh, you know if you were to really go by what uh, the every year you know when board results are out uh, the statistics that typically go around right are that women and girls have done far better than men in terms of their pass percentage or in terms of the percentages that they've scored and i think again this is a skill or a trait that women find it very easy whatever they put their mind to they always want to succeed um, i like to call it the monica effect from the friends series you know she's always wanting to excel and win at whatever she's doing so i think women, women again while of course men are very aggressive in achieving uh, what they set out to do as well and i'm not saying that they don't but i think women also find it very very natural to you know want to succeed and you know put in the effort that they have to to succeed So I think that's the other skill that's very uh, important for sales that you know you make sure that you are succeeding and achieving what you set out to do, and of course I can go on on you know what it takes to uh, achieve as a sales person. But uh, you know, sorry, is someone saying something? Okay, let me go on, move on. So, and I can go on on this, but you know, let me just uh, pause on this piece uh, for this moment and move on to the next slide. and uh, i think what's worked really well for me uh, and i'm on slide 4 um, now i think what's really worked well for me in sales but i think this is a principle that will work very well for you you know wherever you apply this principle be it in your professional journey or be it in your personal journey you know the difference between going beyond what you know actually asked of you or required of you and you know doing less than what's required is you know very uh, clearly explain by this equation mathematical um, you know equation and i think that's what's really also worked very well and i think that's something that works well for anybody who puts in that extra effort so if you are in a job or if you have a personal you know project that you're involved in and you know what is expected out of you is let's say 100 but if you give it that little extra it always will get noticed you know or other keys you know as women i think it's also important for us to make sure that people are noticing this and are uh, you know we are making uh it visible to the people that that it matters to so i think that's so one putting the right effort putting a little bit more than what is required i think will always go uh, a long way and the other important thing is and i think that's something that women uh, should be more conscious of because it doesn't come naturally to us and chetan sandberg has spoken about this in her book lean and you know there are enough and more uh, books that are written on this the fact that you know, women like to um, just go about doing a good job and they hope that somebody else will notice that is not uh something that you know will happen because you know frankly the the fact of the matter is we no longer in a school and a classroom where the teacher will make sure that you know the teacher is paying attention to every child in the class but you know we are in a large organization we are uh you know competing with so many other people who are equally talented and equally well qualified so i think it's very important to whether you know whenever you're achieving something and you're going beyond the call of duty that you make sure that your efforts and your results are made visible to the people and, and you know the people when i talk about people i think this is a you know thumb rule that one of my business managers had uh, given to me and i think it's always worked very well for me and i'd love to share it with you here that you know always 
you know just don't focus on making your immediate manager know of your successes and the efforts that you're putting in make sure that you're always consciously working towards uh, you know having a direct access or visibility with two levels above your manager you know so kind of go you know kind of skip levels of you know a few and you know this could vary on the organization that you're in or the function that you're in but essentially don't just stop at your immediate manager always make sure that your visibility and the acknowledgement of your work uh, is you know known to managers above your immediate manager as well it always holds you in good stead so i think that's something that's really worked well for me moving on to the next slide is uh, you know say yes to new adventures like i was mentioning to you you know that when the first opportunity that i got was a role that i never thought i was inherently good at and you know much like that opportunity uh, you know i uh, proactively all through my career seized and sought new uh, roles new challenges new learnings essentially so i'm always pursuing you know new things to learn and add to my skill set and you know what i'm really really scared of uh, and i like to run away from uh, it is you know whenever this whole sense of complacency starts setting in you know whenever i feel that yes i think i know this reasonably well and i think i can you know and i'm very comfortable doing this is usually when i start you know getting a little uh, edgy about trying to look for the new uh, you know the, my next new learning to remain relevant you know anyways uh, frankly though you know we are we are all living in an era of transition and all of us are seeing as to what's happening to different industries and different companies and you know the challenges are coming in from uh, uh, not the traditional uh, competitors but you know the challenges could could be coming in from a completely new uh, industry and you know could you take could could take the company and organization by or an industry by surprise so i think as employees or even as an entrepreneur if you're an entrepreneur i think it's very very important to continuously learn continuously keep yourself stretched continuously you know uh, allow yourself the opportunity to reskill and relearn and i think that's very important and uh, that's something that i think has always uh, held me in good stead frankly you know the fact that i was in a comfort zone i was in india um, this is where my family is you know my both sets of family my support function and uh, you know i decided to challenge the status quo and took up a job in singapore this was you know also not very easy for me on a personal front because my family stayed back in delhi uh, or gurgaon specifically and i used to fly back every friday and i used to be back in singapore on monday mornings and it was a very trying phase for uh, me and for all of us but i can tell you it was totally well worth it because i think all of us have uh, you know become a lot more resilient have become a lot more uh, adaptable we have learned so many new things about our relationship about ourselves about our ability to cope up which these things and all of us have grown you know including my children my daughter was two and a half years old when i you know took this really really bold and adventurous uh, move and uh, and like i said it wasn't easy you know these were trying times for us my you know daughter wasn't uh, you know it, it took her a little while to get used to it but i think it was in in hindsight in retrospect i think uh, you know all of us should try this out in fact obviously it's easier to do it when you know you're slightly earlier on in your career and your life and you don't have other responsibilities but you know nevertheless you know i think uh, whenever you decide you know is the right time for you to you know take on and try out new things could be change of location could be change of jobs could be change of organization could be change of careers i think we are uh, in a very good um uh, phase of time where there there is a lot more openness openness to such things and i think our family structures are also such in india we are quite quite blessed for that actually that our families really do pitch in and support us women to have a successful career uh, you know of course there might be times when you do need to take a little bit of a break but that, that's all right you know you can always come back when you think the time is right so so there is no i think gone are the days when a typical career path had to be like a continuous upward inclined line i think uh, careers now are more fulfilling and more enriching if they are kind of you know more meandering and you know you kind of you know making sure that you're enjoying what you're doing making sure it's fitting in with your overall uh, scheme of things and importantly you're continuously learning and you know this learning could be a subject matter could be you know uh, just more and more softer aspects about resilience about uh, you know maturity of leadership about handling stressful situations and you know the list is endless moving on to the next slide which is slide 6 i think network 
working is very, very important for women. And I think that's something that, uh, again, in my journey, if I were to look back, I think the fact that I have really invested in relationships, and I'd like to recommend, uh, you know, you know, recommend to all of you who are on the call that make sure that you're investing in building your social capital. Um, you know, I think this is some. Something that will always help you and you know networking typically always has had a very negative connotation because people think that networking is more for a very selfish audience. So I think the principle that really works uh, for uh, networking and I kind of quite identify with Keith's statement that you know the currency of real networking is not greed but generosity you know so make sure that you're always you know connected to people you're keeping your connections live old friends acquaintances colleagues clients you know whoever you meet um, you know, and, and you know, wherever you've had a common connection, make sure that you keep those connections live and always look for opportunities to help wherever you can. And that help could just be, you know, connecting someone you know to another person you know. And you know, networking can be very useful. Uh, and I'm sure I don't have to really belabor the point on you know how networking can be useful. But I think uh, some of the really subtle ways, and I've seen networking help me be very effective in my job, is something that you know sometimes people miss out. You know, sometimes people think that networking is to land you the next job, or think think it's possibly you know for you to get get a good recommendation or a reference on LinkedIn. I, I I don't mean any of that actually. When I talk about networking, I mean you know sometimes if let's say you're on a project in your own job or if there is a product that you want to launch or if there is a particular you know feedback that you want to get on on a particular feature that you're thinking of launching with your organization you know just having some right people to reach out to and get their feedback and their advice or you know of people who might have actually tried out something similar or because they are users or because you know they are somebody you respect for their thought leadership you know it just makes you very effective it just helps you become better uh, and you know you know, hopefully get better quality outcomes after what your day-to-day -day jobs are. And this networking, by the way, can help uh, even on a personal level. Like, for example, I know for me, so many times I've got to know of, let's say, activities to send my children to because of, you know, a conversation that I've had with a friend or or someone I've known or maybe a client who's now become a friend. And, you know, or, or we've kind of, you know, just shared those things. Or sometimes, you know, it's about just... Uh, finding out which is the right school or you know which is the right destination for children for a summer holiday or you know you know for example it could also be let's say you know which is the next good made agency to refer to to get a you know domestic help so it can range from a various from a very very variety of uh, use cases but it's very important to have your network ready and always keep investing in it and i think again women find it very easy you know women tend to have much deeper relationships uh, and i think that's a skill that we should not Think that it is only restricted to our personal life. I think that skill uh, and that inherent strength that women have, I think, is something that we should leverage for our, uh, you know, professional uh, part of our life as well. So that's that's you know kind of some of the things that I think have really worked well in my uh, you know 15 years of career, and I wanted to leave those uh, you know with you. The next you know three slides are really about uh, you know sharing again. Uh, three recommendations if I may uh, you know about what are some of the things that you should go out there uh, and you know possibly imbibe or implement if you identify with them again you know there's no right or wrong uh, each of us identifies uh, with whatever approach works for our situation and for us and for the personality type that we have but again these are three things which I think if uh, we women you know tend to do I think it will just you know make life much simpler for you and allow you to really go for it you know um, you know go for whatever you want to you're thinking of you want to try out you know because even if it doesn't work well you know even if it ends up you know not for what you desired it was it would be an experience that will definitely leave you with a lot more uh, learning and experience which you can use for the future and I thought this you know and be action biased essentially and uh, I think before you set goals or at the time of setting goals I think what's important is to you know it's important to know what you want to do but I think it's also important to declutter this and decide you know what you should not be doing or what you don't want to do because if you set out a goal list which is you know got 10 goals I think it's not practical to achieve all of those uh, with the life priorities and uh, you know commitments that you will have I think it's very very important for you to prioritize and identify what are the top one two three I would think maximum you know goals that you want to set out for yourself 
and just focus on those and and you know instead of uh, just internalizing them and thinking about you know what do i do what do i do about the goals i also think that one thing that you should do is you know just be very very action biased make sure that once you've identified those goals just you know make sure that you get into an action mode and get out there and just keep trying keep trying because again um, there is no rule book to this and different actions you know could yield different results for different people or same actions could yield different results for different people so just but what's important is to keep taking actions and moving forward and i think that's very very important the second thing is uh, you know while you're pursuing a career goal uh, and i'm assuming that you know this career goal could be possibly for some of you who want to get back into jobs or for some of you who want to get to the next level of promotion or next level of responsibility or some other you know personal goal that you have or maybe you know a, a, a talent that you have and you want to get to you know start using it commercially or you want to get to the next level of it whatever your goal might be uh, make sure that you know while you're focusing on that goal goal you do not lose sight of uh, you know having a more holistic life i like what manisha last uh, you know has written on one of her blogs on linkedin that she says that you know you should be ambitious for life not just for work because you know it's very important uh, for you to be happy if you are happy uh, you know you will be able to keep everyone around you happy and i think for a woman that's very very important to make sure that you know her family it could be her parents could be her husband children whoever family is for you you know it's very very important for you to make sure that you are very happy internally because that's going to be a key ingredient to make sure that you have the energy and the strength to carry on and you know go about doing the things that you have to for your friends and family and what you want to do for yourself so so make sure that you know you don't lose sight of that the other thing that i've also seen work very well for me i think is you know that everything does not have the same level of importance every day you know earlier you know there were for many years to be honest i used to struggle to get this whole work life balance you know thing which is such a cliched word or a, or a phrase that everyone uses that you know i would hope that every day i get back home on time spend time you know doing what i like to do either with children or you know all year with my family but it would just not happen and what that ended up doing for me was that i would be more frustrated with the fact that i was not achieving a work life balance despite uh you know making my efforts towards it so i think what i what i learned a few years back is actually it's not important to have a work life balance on a daily basis i think it's important to be happy in you know going about doing the things that you like to do that are important to you over a period of time so for example if it's important for me to be you know giving 12 hours or 13 hours or 14 hours at work from monday to friday i will do that and i will do a jolly good job of it you know so i will completely concentrate and focus on that and i will give it my best shot but you know what it does mean is that you know once i leave office or on the weekend then it is you know the same level of commitment and focus and dedication to my family and making sure that i'm spending you know that that hours with them fully concentrated on them and i think that's something that that's very important so so look for these you know and again like i said these are you know equations and situations that all of us you, all of you will know what works for each of you uh, depending on your situation but i think keep it easy for yourself don't you know raise the bar so high for yourself to achieve on a daily basis that it frustrates you and instead of helping it actually starts uh, taking away your productivity and you know uh, taking away your happiness i think that's that's very very important and i think the last thing that i want to mention is that uh, you know i love this uh, you know graphics which basically talks about that female is actually uh, iron added for greater strength which women have greater ductility and a lot of flexibility and adaptability that women have and additional magnetism so i think be confident have the self confidence that you can um, achieve whatever you set your mind up to achieve and i think it's it's just in your head once you have internalized this once you have the confidence in yourself and once you decide that yes i can do it there is nothing there is nothing in this world that can stop you from achieving it so i think that's that's possibly the last slide that i want to leave you with uh, and just about time i think um, uh, and the last thing that i want to uh, in the last slide really is just about uh, introducing to you know you to or uh, you know you to the mentorship group so that drops for her is uh, you know flagging off on 29th of april their first uh, road show is in gurugram for so for some of you who would like to meet me and some of the other very very impressive list of mentors that drops for her have please uh, you know please do join us on 29th april we'd love to uh, meet you and you know talk to you 
so um, you know that's that's really what it is and and all the best to you for whatever you want to you know get uh, for yourself and achieve for yourself uh, thank you ruchita for your session i think we can have the q and a now it's been a very informative and a very learning session and yes and a very different perspective also thank you for that Ladies, any questions? Hi, Ruchita. This is Tanuja here. Hi, Tanuja. Uh, hi. It was a very motivating session. I'm so happy to be a part of this, and thanks uh, to Jobs for Helping to for providing me an opportunity. You were speaking about um, being uh, transparent to uh, the ne next level of your marriage manager that is two levels up. It's one of the very best advices I got from you today because of not doing that uh, there was some problem in my previous uh, company so I was repenting that why didn't I do this otherwise I would uh, I mean I would not have suffered in that company so I really want to thank yeah no thank you in fact and uh, you know to be honest I think I uh, you know in the early parts of my career I would have made the same mistake when actually my skip level manager came uh, and gave me this advice and you know after that I've actually always uh, consciously followed it and it's always worked very well because you know there can always be situations where there is a bias that comes in between you know a manager and a yeah. you know team member relationship so it's always best to have uh, you know your networks and your communication channel open and as well as visibility to what you do and uh, you know what your achievements are with people other than your immediate manager so it definitely works very well i agree with that completely so hopefully um, you know in your next is, uh, we yeah we feel that if we bias the immediate supervisor, he might feel bad. I think there should be some uh, tactical so you have to ways to do it. To do it right? Yeah, that's true. Actually, so you have to always do it in a very nice manner without, uh, you know, stepping on his or her uh, authority. And I think uh, some of the ways to do this could be, you know, very subtle and, you know, but but not very confrontational. Uh, hmm. I mean that's possibly an initial approach that you can take. So, for example, if there is something nice that's happened, or there is a project that you're working on, or there is uh, you know something that you'd like your uh, skip level manager or people above them to know, I think it's always a good idea that if you're sending an update mail to them, that you know you hmm. copy them as well, you know, and if you CC them, so that the manager also knows that you CC them. So you're not doing this on the sly. And you know, frankly, mm -hmm. there is no fault that that manager, even if that manager is not comfortable, even if let's say she's not comfortable or he's not comfortable, you know, there is nothing that they can come back and tell you that listen, why did you copy them? You know, because there is there is nothing wrong in what you're doing. Some of the other ways to do this, you know, could also be that whenever you get an opportunity to let's say meet with them, so let's say there is a planning meeting or let's say you know you're taking them for a meeting because many times these seniors come down to wherever your location is, you know, either they will do a meeting with you or you know, they're going in the car with you, then those, use those opportunities very effectively, you know, by talking to them about what you've done. See, because you can, of course, talk about the weather and, you know, families and everything else, but that's not going to get you anywhere. So it's always, you know, better yeah. to have those points ready with you that whenever you get the opportunity of, of, you know, either just catching them at a, you know, water cooler or at a coffee machine or somewhere else saying that, you know, oh, I'd like to share with you that, you know, this is what I've done and this is what we've achieved. Or, you know, there is a project that you're working on you know, you could also look at it like an advice that you want to take from them. You know, go to them and say, that, you know, this is a project that I'm working on and these are my findings, this is my recommendation, would love to have your advice on it. And, you know, that will make the, you know, the, the senior manager feel very happy about as well. But this is your subtle way of telling them 
that uh, you know this is what you're doing and this is what your capabilities are and this is what your potential is and you know the same thing frankly i i also would like to kind of take that forward and uh, also recommend that let's say once you've decided what your goal and aspiration is you know professionally yeah. i think it's very important to make it be known to people above your manager so that at least you know if at all there are any opportunities that come up that person can remember that conversation and you know keep you in mind uh, not to say that they will always be able to remember because they also have lots of pressing demands of their time and attention but you know it's always good to keep that you know reinforced and reiterated in a good way so that uh, you know everyone knows that what your aspirations are and it's not an unknown factor for them because you know again it's like that those things right even a child you know when a child wants something is hungry or is sleepy or wants to go somewhere the child also has to explain that to his parents or his family right correct uh, so it's really unfair for us to you know frankly expect our managers to know things and anticipate things uh, you know just by intuition uh, you mm -hmm. know about what we want so i think it's always correct. good to just spell it out correct i being an emotional girl i was i was feeling that my immediate manager might feel bad if i go ahead so that is the mistake i did Yes. no it's not a mistake you know again it's something that all of us you know have our own learning path on right we do tend to sometimes get very hesitant about these things you know should be should be not because you know again we like to keep everyone around us happy right we usually don't yes. like conflicts and confrontations so it's i think very natural but what i would say at, at those situations is you know make sure that you bulldoze that uh, in, in you know inertia bulldoze that thing and you know go ahead and do what you think is very practical and important for you to do even for example if there are let's say town halls or meetings make sure that you speak up make sure that you share your views make sure that of course it has to be very well thought out view so don't speak you know something that actually instead of helping you kind of doesn't help you but you know make sure that you speak up because you know again the other thing that i noticed uh, more so in india than you know internationally because i work with a lot of cross cultural people as well i think in india while we are a very vocal nation and very vocal individuals but when it comes to these group meetings or town halls etc we are normally very hesitant to speak up and that is usually never the case you know if, you, if i look at even other asian nationalities so i think that's another way for you to stand out uh, in front of senior management you know if you have a question if you have a view if you have a comment don't hesitate just just speak up and i know again you know it will take you a little bit of conditioning to force yourself to do it but just then you know just do it just do it yeah uh, i am you know and, and you, sorry to interrupt hi 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 from hello from me yeah yeah hello yeah hi could you can you hello. hear me yes i can hear you sanita okay uh, yeah hi um, um a very nice presentation and i especially like the declutter part where you mentioned about deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do um i think i am kind of struggling with that at the moment and uh, it would be nice to get your insight maybe on it um see i i when the last job i had was 5 years ago and uh, most hmm. of my work experience was in the hello. us and hello hello yes can you hear me hello i think i can hear you sabrina uh i I think Sabrina is trying to speak as well, uh, but Sanita, go on. I can hear you. Yeah. So my challenge was that I moved five years ago, and most of my work experience was in the U.S. Then coming here, I did uh, take a break because you know we were trying to settle in and all that. But now it's been five years, so I'm a bit hesitant. I'm not sure how to go back into the workforce, and I'm also toying with the idea of doing something on my own. But again. i'm struggling with the declutter part uh, is it how difficult is it for a person with a 5 year break to get back into the workforce in india and uh, i mean how do we go about this like you know what would be the best avenue okay so you know while of course the jobs for her team is an expert at just this uh, you know and helping you with that i'm sure they'll be able to help you uh, on that but let me give you my two bits on this so i think one um, you know there are a lot of companies who have these wonderful programs uh, called you know second careers or some such form of that right where they actually are looking for women like you who and, and it doesn't matter where your previous work experience is and you know some companies have it like a project work they start off with you know like a six month internship or a, it's it's not like an internship it's actually a real project where they need additional you know expertise and they do not have it in house so they're very happy for uh, 
you know, so Genpack has it, Google has it, Startups have it. So, so, so there are quite a few who have it. So depending on your, you know, skill set, uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's a good area to start off with because that will also allow you to kind of ease back into this whole corporate environment, if I may, you know, call it that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, taking on a real life project, it will, you know, allow you to kind of. Uh, test waters with the company, with the kind of work, let's say, you know, it is, it could be a work that you've done prior to, you know, you're taking a break, or it could be a completely new work, but you know, something that interests you, and you like to try your hand at it, you know, I think that, that those kind of projects really help, so I think that could be one approach. The other approach, of course, is there are some companies which have like a full-time employment, uh, you know, program for taking in women who are coming back from a break, so I think that those are some good areas to start off with. Those are two things. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the third thing about decluttering that you're talking about, I think it's a tough one. I struggle with it myself, you know, always, uh -huh. continuously, you know, and, and I think what I then have to just force myself to, you know, think about it from a few, I, I start asking myself a few questions. Okay, mm -hmm. does this, will this matter to me one year down the line? Will this matter mm -hmm. to me five years down the line? What I'm, you know, wanting to spend time on, etc. Will this, you know, how will this help me? Is it adding any skill to me? Is it not adding any skill to me? Is it some... Thing that is going to move my career forward, not move my career forward. So I start asking mm -hmm. some very hard hitting questions. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm kind of struggling with too many priorities that I've taken on my plate and I've said yes to too many things. Uh, because to me as well, you know, it's very hard to say no to things. You know, I like to, you know, because in this my whole uh, hunger to learn and try out new things, mm -hmm. I'm always saying yes to a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm wondering that, you know, this might not be uh, the most efficient way of doing it, but then you know, so, so either I stagger those you know projects or those you know things that I want to do, assuming that those are important for me to try my hand at, and even if you know I discover that that's not for me, but at least I want to try out you know rather than thinking about it that maybe I could have tried it, maybe I could have liked it, I prefer to try my hand at it and then either adopt it or discard it, as the case might be. So what I try and do is you know ask those questions. You know, does it matter? You know, is it going to help my career? Is it going to help me? Is it you know going to position me better? Is it going to you know um, position me? Is it going to help me you know uh, stretch myself? Is it going to help me display leadership qualities? Is it going to take me to the next level? So those are some hard questions that I ask. Uh, when it comes to professional prioritization, when it comes to personal things, you know, when you're let's say trying to dabble. Uh, between lots of things that you have professionally that you like to do, plus a lot of things from the personal front. I think what works usually for me, and I think this is something that I've learned uh, over many, many, many years, is on the personal side that, you know, some things which, you know, are just things which are good uh, to do, but not necessarily that's going to help anybody. You know, I just have stopped focusing on them and outsourcing them. So, you know, does do I have to spend time in the kitchen every day? to make sure that I'm cooking meals for my family because I love them. I think there are other ways to display my love. Um, you know, are there, you know, I mean, similar such things, right? And again, it could be, you know, it could be because I inherently, I think I'm such a bad cook that, you know, I think people are better off without me, you know, trying to try my hand at cooking. But, you know, it could be very different for somebody else. Yeah. Uh, you know, or for example, I mean, simple things, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, I, I travel to work three hours, you know, one and a half hours, one day and back. So, you know, one approach to this could be that, oh my God, you know, that's three hours wasted, et cetera, et cetera. But then I like to read. So then that's my me time, you know, and then I try and utilize that time by reading and catching up on, you know, things I'd like to do just by myself. So I'm just saying that those are some things that, you know, everyone uh, and all of you will, you know, I guess choose for your own personal uh, likes and dislikes and personality type. But I think just asking a few hard hitting questions that doesn't really matter in the you know scheme of things i mean you know with my kids really remember that the house was so neat and clean after 20 years maybe not they'll possibly remember the you know two hours that you spent with them playing something with them so those are just some questions that i think help me make the choice hello hello hi sabrina uh hi uh, uh yeah, uh, it was very uh, interesting and a useful session. And uh, in fact, uh, one can imagine the kind of energy you bring to the uh, organization, and that's why they didn't let you go. That's something you mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah, Ruchika. Yeah, so I, I myself have been in business development, so I understand your passion, the way you work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, uh, I have over 20 years experience in business development. But this is in a niche area that is, uh, you know, software solutions to academic institutes, non-profit, government research, etc. 
So my last job uh, uh, where I was, the company was acquired and therefore I uh, took a break. It was kind of a forced break and uh, so it's been about a year oh. and a half and uh, I would need to get back to work and uh, of particular interest is uh, what you mentioned about these uh, organizations like Google uh, ha having these project works where one can kind of test the waters. So is there a particular link or contact you could share with me so that I can you know uh, touch base with them and see how it works because IT is my uh, kind of background that is uh, IT sales and uh, I would uh, love to get yeah. in touch with you know organizations like Google and uh, while we are at it uh, I would love to have your contact number also because so many things we cannot discuss online because we need to give others an opportunity so uh, Ruchika I will appreciate yeah, if sure. you could give your contact number to share it sure Definitely, I'll just do that. Uh, just to answer your first question, um, you know, all these uh, opportunities, the last that I checked them, and it's been some time because actually while I was at the Diversity Council at City, we were trying to introduce something similar. Uh, you know, most of these opportunities are always posted online at these organizations' websites. So I think that's a good way to start. I think also the Jobs for Our team uh, might be in touch with some of them. I'm not so sure which ones are the ones that I named, but I can tell you these were the programs that we had researched uh, while I was at City. And we were looking at introducing something similar for uh, you know city alumni women to come back or you know otherwise. And uh, so I, I did uh, you know find all of these organizations running a very very successful program at that. And you know we kind of took that as a uh, learning ground for us when we were trying to design something for ourselves. So this is this was always updated on the website. But I think uh, it would also help to go you know, through jobs for her team because I know they are uh, engaged with them quite extensively as well, at least with some of these organizations. And um, my number uh, is 9810462666. Thanks a lot. Now uh, this uh, Google, of course I will visit the website and you mentioned jobs for team. Uh, what exactly is that? Jobs for her. Uh, this is the organization okay, okay, which okay. has actually organized this webinar. Yeah. Okay. Jobs for her. Okay, fine. Uh, so there they would be having these kind of uh, this kind of information. I believe so. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, uh, Ruchika, I, I missed the earlier part of your uh, webinar, but uh, you are in hmm. Paytm. I'm in Paytm right now. That's right. Okay. Okay. That's, I mean, the, the, the revolutionary digital technology. So you're very much at the forefront of technology right now. So it must be really exciting for you to, you know, it is. be at the forefront. Yeah, and uh, it must be highly charged and things like that. So whether it is a PTM or a Google or, a, you know, uh, all these uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, portals or, you know, what have you. So these are very much the latest uh, along with cloud, cloud and big data analytics so, so this very much sums up the latest in technology so I have earlier worked yes, on absolutely yeah, yeah. Paytm is a yes yeah no, I'm saying uh, that Paytm is a great uh, organization quite um, quite fast-paced and quite dynamic so it's uh, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure and learning experience this last one year that I've been here okay uh, are you located in Hi. Dubai or Delhi in Noida, actually, our office is in Noida. Okay, Noida. Okay, 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 okay. I missed that earlier. Hi, and, Ruchita. Uh, Hello, ma'am. Yeah, Ruchita Vinti, this side. I have uh, one Hi, question. Vinti. Just wanted to know. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Ruchita, uh, right now, since last one year, I took break. But what I know that since last 10 years, I was working with sourcing and procurement and I started with the with very good hmm. organizations I must say that yes I worked with a very prestigious organization so far but hmm. I always uh, I mean now you are sitting at that level from where I can ask you this question because you are also a woman and I am also a woman and I worked in this field and sourcing and procurement but I find it out that still for you know women this field uh, gives a hits uh, back to the woman because maybe sometimes being as a woman as you said in your conversation that we are very specific about that what we commit we do 
and sourcing and procurement every company every company wants to bring the transparency into this area of finances and operations but still there are certain areas where still women don't get that opportunity to perform so I just want to know your views on that because I know this question could be irrelevant but for me it is very important to know because now I have taken a break and again I have to start my career so this time I am giving a thought to start with the business development as in Six Sigma because I have done that certification hmm. course as well so because I find it out it was very difficult to prove myself to when you take the stand for honesty when you take the stand for doing good deeds for the company but still that management is not supporting in that way or sometimes I mean there are certain areas where yes I tried to negotiate with the vendors which was for five years and it was uh, it could be a huge huge saving for the sake of company but still my manager didn't allow me so I faced all these situations throughout so I finally given up upon the sourcing and procurement and I thought now I should start with the career where I fit for maybe audit maybe I can speak about so what is your view about being as a woman to uh, be participate again to start with sourcing and procurement or to start with the, that Six Sigma Lean, uh, Six Sigma development? Uh, so Mindy, I frankly don't know enough about sourcing and procurement or even Six Sigma, you know, give you an advice on that, so, or, you know, I'd, I'd resist that. Uh, but what I will tell you that, uh, you know, I think what you faced is uh, something that's not very unnatural. I think that's something mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, anybody can face, uh, women, yes, because we're speaking about women and, you know, most of the audience today is women. I think a lot of women can face or would have faced it in some degree or the other in, you know, whatever function or whatever company they are in. But I okay. think it could also be something that men face as well. You know, I mean, and I don't okay. know the intricacies of your experience and, you know, pardon me if I'm being too generalistic and I'm kind of, you know, just no, no, uh, that's saying fine, something yeah. that is just not true. But I'm just saying that, you know, something sure. similar could have also happened to a man. So let's say a man would have decided to, you know, show a huge saving to the company and the manager would have decided that, no, this is not something that is in his or her interest and would yeah, not have taken it forward with the management to do it, right? So that, yeah, frankly, yeah. I think could happen to either gender. I think what needs to be done, uh, my, my personal approach to this would possibly be that I would still persist. I would try and take it to a few levels above and say, you know, there is, if, you know, I so truly believe in this uh, thing, I would definitely, you know, give it my best, give it my best to, you know, come out and design the right recommendation and, but also give it my best to push it through in the chain and the organization because, you know, when you have large organizations, if trying, and if you're trying to bring about a very drastic change, sometimes there are other aspects about it, which, you know, because of your own function, you might not really understand uh, or, or, you know, maybe we need more information to understand that what implications it could have for other functions and other divisions. So sometimes it's, I think, good to just bounce off and, you know, get those, in, you know, inputs from other teams as well that could possibly be impacted as well. And then, you know, come back with a more comprehensive recommendation, taking into account what could work well, what would its impact be that would, you know, possibly be negative or positive for the other functions. And then go back with the recommendation and, you know, try and, and I would do my best to push it through to, you know, whatever levels, you know, to which I think I can, you know, very comfortably approach or even sometimes not comfortably, but just approach and, you know, do it. Having said which, if let's say even after that, if I feel that this is something that's not working out and I feel so strongly about it, then I think there are always other organizations who would value, uh, you know, you know what the contribution that you're trying to bring. And then I, I think it's best to just look for those opportunities. Now, whether a change in, um, you know, the job, you know, type is going to make the problem, you know, easier, I'm not so sure because, you know, this is, to me, it sounds like more a generic problem can happen to any function anywhere in any organization. So I think somewhere one has to, and you know, also I think the other thing that, you know, what you tend to realize if you've kind of, you know, been in an organization for long enough, you will also realize that currently the environment for most organizations is very challenging as well. You know, the macro environment is so dynamic that sometimes, you know, the organization, like I was talking about, you know, decluttering and prioritizing what we as individuals need to do. I think that's the same call that organizations need to also make that 
you know, the macroeconomic environment is what it is. And, you know, I, and, and macroeconomic environment could be negative for your industry and hence you're trying to cope up and, you know, get back at it. Or it could be so, so you know, so superbly positive that, you know, now is the time for you to hit the iron when it's hot, you know. So, so as an organization also, I've seen that, you know, organizations will tend to prioritize a few things. So I think as employees, sometimes it, it is also important for us to be a little bit more patient uh, and, you know, okay. make sure that we understand that, you know, this could be because of that and, you know, give it a try after some time and, you know, see, give it, give it a couple of times because I've seen in my, uh, you know, experiences that sometimes an idea that you put today is, you know, something that gets totally ignored and, you know, then you position it again after six months because, you know, the situation is such that, you know, now people are a lot more open to understanding it, then it gets taken up or maybe a third time. So somewhere I think it's also, you know, incumbent upon us as employees employees to try and step back from our immediate role and our own immediate contribution that we're trying to make and look at the bigger picture for the organization and figure out that, you know, whether this is something that the organization could spend time on and if they're not spending time on, then what is it that's, you know, at least in your mind, try and understand why. Sure. No, this, per this break was for the personal reasons. That is for sure. It was not because of any professional reasons. But yes, uh, now I'm going mm -hmm. to start again. So I was just giving a thought to start with sourcing and procurement or to the, uh, from the new perspective as in uh, Six Sigma. Because these days the business of, you know, operational, op operational excellence and business development is also too demanded. So that was my question. But thank you so much. Yes. Uh, somehow I understand and I can relate that yes maybe sometimes it's not gender related maybe it's because of that organization works in that way definitely I've taken your point thank you so much all the best to you thank you hi Aruchita uh, that I lost you in between because I lost power but just wanted to take a minute to say thank you no for problem. your in My pleasure and all the best to you as well. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, am I audible? Yes, is that Malika? Yes, that's right. Uh, firstly, uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, hi. Firstly, I just want to say thank you for a fabulous presentation and uh, I think it couldn't have come at the right time for me personally. Uh, I have, uh, I used to work as a flight attendant and I have been on a break for about three and a half years now because uh, I had a son and he's growing up. Uh, what I want to ask you ma'am is, uh, is that I intend to get back to work but I'm at a place uh, in my life where I'm a little unsure about whether I should get back into the corporate world or I should take up something that I could do professionally because I'm quite interested in photography as a profession. I think I'm decent at it and I could work to improve my skills. Uh, so I just want to know that if somebody is, uh, if I want to take up an alternative career professionally, if you have any tips or suggestions that could sort of help me uh, make this decision, uh, you know, in a, in a more uh, systematic manner, uh, what are the things that I should uh, sort of keep in mind if I need to decide which way to go? Uh, Sajali so Malika, what uh, the, the frame of mind that I've been on recently and uh, I think that's uh, what I would possibly recommend and you know it has no scientific basis to it so please you know feel free to discard it absolutely just a personal uh, thought process that I've kind of arrived at uh, is that, you know, if, if photography is something that you've been having in your mind as something that you'd like to try your hand at, uh, you know, what we, end, what we, most of us, again, I'm generalizing too much, but you know, most of us end up saying that, you know, okay, let's, let's focus on career. Let's do this now. And you know, whatever we genuinely want to do uh, and desire to do, we just kind of keep pushing it to later saying that, oh, we'll do it. We'll have time in life to do it. Yeah. I would say, you know, if you have, you've, you've been very passionate about it, you want to give it a try, do it now. You know, see the corporate job uh, or, or, you know, going back to what you want to, to do or what you were earlier, earlier doing is something that will always be possible for you. You know, there is nothing that can keep you away from it, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's a door that will open for you whenever you want to, you know, and, and when I say whenever you want to, I'm sure there, it will have its own process of applying and interviewing and selection, etc., etc. That process can take anything from three months to six months, but I think sooner or later you will get back into that thing and that's going to be an easy one to do. Um, you know, but if photography is something that you feel very passionate about and 
you've been thinking about doing it, I would think do it now uh, rather than postponing it. Because I've, I've realized that, uh, you know, when we are in this young, uh, you know, early start of our career, uh, you know, the first 10, 15 years, we tend to take ourselves and our career so seriously that, you know, we end up thinking that, you know, okay, we should possibly just keep this for later, keep this for later. But I think it's, it's, it's better to be a little bit more open and uh, you know not be uh, shy of taking such decisions See, also i would think that given that you are already on a break trying photography for the next one year or two years whatever you want to give it as a time i think anyways it's just going to be a part of this rather than let's say you join my corporate uh, world and then again you know your career path will start looking up will start accelerating then to take a break again you know from it for photography might not be such an easy choice it is, I think it's an right. easier choice now than it might be when you get back into the corporate thing. And because, you know, then once you start giving your, you know, hard work to it, you will also start aspiring for promotions and then the next level, and then the next level. And then to walk away from something like that is going to be tougher. Hold on. Oh, how sweet. That's your child in the background. Ladies, we can take up one last question as it's near the closing time. Hi, Rujita. Tanuja again. Hi, Tanuja. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether it is relevant or not. Can I know if there are any QA opportunities in uh, QA lead or QA manager opportunities in Paytm? I don't know, Tanuja, but why don't you send me your CV and I will uh, try and share it with my HR. Yeah, sure. Can you please uh, give me your ID, mail ID? Yeah, it's Ruchita at Paytm.com. Ruchita at Paytm.com. TA, right? C-H-I-T-A. TA, yeah, TA. T for Toronto. Yeah, sure. I will just send my resume. Thank you. Okay. We should stop the questions now and the session. Thank you, Ruchita, for such a wonderful session. We had great insights from your from your story, how you came up and achieved success in your expertise that is sales. And definitely your learnings and your recommendations has been a very good uh, session for us today. Thank you once again. And we'll meet you at the next Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Sorry for the interruption. Yes, look forward to meeting you at the Mentorship Boat Show. And uh, all the ladies, all the best to you. Uh, go shine. And uh, thanks a lot to Jobs for her team for inviting me for this. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to meeting some of you at the Boat Show. Thank you, Ruchita. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye. Bye.